Yo, welcome back. WWLA University YouTube channel. We are in Theodore DeBry's Discovering the New World. So remember in the previous YouTube video, uh, we spoke about Jacques Lamon being the artist who created the original engravings of the Mississippian people of Florida in 1562. Okay, so Theodore de Bry was able to obtain those original engravings once Jacques Lamon died. So once Jacques Lamon died, Theodore de Bry was able to obtain those engravings, published them on his own, but as well, he revised them. So remember, a lot of Atina, as we spoke about before, is the enemy, the great enemy of Saturiona. So just take a look at the true representation of Saturiona here. And we can get an idea of how a lot of Atina may actually look when the images are not black and white. So remember, the original engravings were brilliant watercolors. Um, Theodore de Bry, when we look at uh, another source, uh, well, the same, the same artifact, but just through another source, when we look at the University of, well, no, actually, this is Rare Maps. So Rare Maps, Barry Lawrence Ruderman, they have this version of the same illustration. So still slightly pale, but a little darker than what we see here. So a lot of Atina in this scene is showing the French. This is Lanier. He's showing the French a war ceremony. Here we have a lot of Atina's sorcerer chanting spells as the musicians make rhythmic sounds or music. So kind of like rap music here, like, you know. The sorcerer chants the spells, the musicians make the, mu the musical sounds. You can also see the tradition, legs, scalps, arms. And this is uh, going into war and after winning a war. Now, just to go back and we understand what we're looking at here. This is Theodore de Bry. Theodore de Bry was the first to illustrate the literature of American travel with any degree of accuracy or elegance. Okay. You want to try to get this book if you can get your hands on it. Discovering the New World based on the works of Theodore de Bry, edited by Michael Alexander. So, Library of Congress, Cavalier card number. You can see here. Let me just look a little more in here. This is all important to read. I can't read this for you guys right now, but what I'll do is hold it here for a second where you can pause it, try to read it yourself. I'll do the same for this page. And this is the editorial note. So very important to understand. This is the information that the African-American black man and woman has not been privy to. Pause it read this part down here. This is a uh, representation of Saturiona. Let's 
So we can also see another representation of Saturniona while with his bride. So they don't only show Saturniona like this, where he's dripping and go. He also has, you know, fine fabrics and animal skins, you know, which they, they paint on as well. When we go to the New York Public Library, you can see here, New York Public Library Digital Collections, it says that this is the habit of the King of Florida in 1625. So you can see how colorful, you know, this, uh, these garments are. And this is 1625, this is not 1562. Satriona lived in 1562. But you can see the customs and the traits, um, the, you know, the different, the different customs that the, the Mississippians are participating in or that they have at that time is uh, staying the same even after uh, some decades in between. So just imagine how that looks. But then with this guy wearing it, Okay, so in the last video, you know, we wanted to kind of highlight that this is not African culture. This is not West Africa. This is not East Africa, ancient Egypt. This is not, you know, North African history. This is not the Moorish Empire. This is, uh, this is not Carthaginian history. You know, this is purely Mississippian history, uh, North America, you know. Um, so here we see Saturiona and we spoke about in the previous video, the fact that these were sun worshipers. So this is not Islamic culture. This is not Christianity. This is sun worship. So see here, the solemn consecration of the skin of a stag to the sun. Look at the tattoos. Look at the look at the build. You know, look at the look at the customs, the jewelry. We're all, we're looking at the same people here. Mississippians. Okay? They pray to the sun. Every year, a little before spring, that is to say at the end of February, King Altina's subjects take the skin of the largest stag they have been able to capture. Leaving on its antlers, they stuff this, this skin full of the most delicate plants which grow there and sew it up. At the antlers, the neck and the stomach, they hang the best of their fruit, flutes and harmonious songs to a, to a special place, large and level. Here it is put on a high tree with its head and breast facing the rising sun. Then the Indians say prayers to the sun so that it will give them again good fruit similar to the ones offered to it. The king and his sorcerer stand near the tree singing chants to which the people standing apart make the responses. Then the king and all his retinue salute the sun and depart, leaving the deer's hide where it is until the following year. They repeat this ceremony annually. So these are sun worshipers. This is not Islamic Moorish culture. This is not um, Coptic Christianity. This is not, you know, this is purely Mississippi, and I can't stress that enough. Um, let's take a look. Now, this book also chronicles Virginia, okay?
you guys were ever curious about you know how the cities looked you can see you know nowhere in europe at this point in time did they have controlled agriculture okay these are small towns and then they form into great big towns plaza cities you know mound cities The marks of sundry of the chief men of Virginia. Okay, we can see the swastika here. Anybody ever seen voodoo symbols? I'm pretty sure y'all y'all seen that somewhere in New Orleans. Okay, but this book has so many gems in it. Just wanted to break into it a little bit just to get you guys familiar with this information. But this is what the African-American, this is what the black man and woman so-called needs to study. Because this doesn't deal with West Africa. This doesn't deal with slavery. This is not the B.C. time period. This is 1500s, 1600s, 1700s, 1800s. You know, that was just yesterday you know um let's take a look at a couple more so here we see saturiona like we spoke about in the previous video leading a war party and praying to the sun for a victory Okay, so everyone's sun worshipers. The University of Michigan has this same image, but in color. Okay, Saturiana leading a war ceremony. Saturiana. When we go back to the New York Public Library Digital Collections, this is their prized possession here. This is Athor who is Saturniona's son, meeting with Lanier, the Frenchman. The interesting thing is that when we go to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, U.S. Department of Commerce, they have the same illustration, but completely different than what the New York Public Library Digital Collection has on hand. Let's go back to let's go back to that more. You can see the complete difference. But when you go to the New York Public Library, <laughs> this is what they're going to promote to you. These people are said to be extinct. These are the Mound Builder people. Princeton Library, Princeton Archives, excuse me. Uh, but we can see another version of the same illustration, 1591. Okay. Sun worshipers. This is very interesting. Here... So remember, we said sun worshipers and wizards. So at the beginning of a campaign, Altina consults his sorcerer. We got to check this scene out right here. So Altina, remember, this is Saturiona. Saturiona is the enemy 
of Altina. And when we look back on the last video, we spoke about um, the write-up that was done on this particular sculpture here. And what we need to know is that there is not only this sculpture that exists, but there is a brother sculpture that exists or um, a companion sculpture. And that one is this one here. So completely different uh, king representation here. The crown is completely different than Saturnus. The chest plate uh, completely different in design. The custom the customs are completely the same, but the designs are different. Okay. So this very well could be Altina because Saturniona and a lot of Atina is very they're very important to the history of the the Spanish and the French. Okay. So back to this particular scene here. The Indians carried the French on their shoulders, which was a great relief to them in the strong heat. So Florida heat, Florida heat. I don't think they're going to be able to look like this in that Florida heat. I'm pretty sure they look like this in that Florida heat. But back to what we were talking about here. The Indians carry the French on their shoulders, which was a great relief to them in the strong heat. At last they arrived at the frontier. The king then halted his army and called an ancient magician who was more than a hundred years old. So bidding him reveal the enemy's dispositions. So that was the request of Altina to his sorcerer. The magician cleared a space in the middle of the army and on seeing Altigny, he asked for the shield his page was brandishing. This he put on the ground and drawing a circle of five feet diameter around it, he inscribed some letters and signs in a circle. Sun worshippers using wizardry, sorcery. This is big time history. This is not Moorish history. This is not Carthaginian. This is not Egyptian. This is not West African, okay? So the purpose of the magician was to reveal the disposition of the enemies. After a quarter of an hour, he looked so terrifying that his face no longer seemed human. He controlled himself. He contorted himself until his bones could be heard cracking. And he did many other things besides that were most unnatural. At last, exhausted and, at, and as if confused, he resumed his original aspect. Then he left the circle, saluted the king and informed him on the number of enemies and in which place they were awaiting him. Check this out. A lot of Athena, Florida king, said to be more powerful than Saturniona. So the French, if we go back to here, the French partnered with Altina. Altina was able to go to war with his enemy, Patano. Thanks to the French, Altina gains a victory over his enemy, Patano. This made Saturniona mad because Saturniona thought he had a friend in the French. And the deal was. Whoever your enemies are is my enemies. And whoever your homies are is my homies. 
But the French went against that. They partnered with a lot of Tina for a small period of time. Their friendship ended as well. Here we see Saturniana. So the inaccuracies of Theodore de Bry that historians most frequently uh, mention is that this army formation here is not likely. This is not how um, North Americans, Mississippians fought. You know, they fall by ambush. They they fall by sneak attack. So here is where we are thinking Theodore de Bry may have added his own uh, hint of his creativity, I guess. There's tons of gems in this book. This book also chronicles Virginia. It chronicles the islands. And it gives you some real history on what was going on. Because they tell you that the Spanish came over here and dominated everybody. 